الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله خير نبي أرسله أرسله الله تبارك وتعالى رحمة للعالمين فقال في حقه وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد اللهم أجرنا من عذابك يا رب العالمين الحمد لله It is from the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us that He has gathered us here today not only on the day of Friday but on a momentous occasion Eid and just yesterday we were celebrating Arafah and the divine presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that day of Gnosis that day of knowledge in which all of us be it in our homes be it the Hujaj be it in the Masajid we're all seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy we're all seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and here we are today celebrating the fruits of that but what do these three days have in common? the day of Friday the day of Eid and the day of Arafah so Jum'ah in Arabic comes from Jama'ah which means to collect to come together and Eid means a return and Arafah is that day of knowledge and so the idea is that we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala collectively seeking to renew our covenant with Him which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the Qur'an when He says وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدْنَا أَنْ تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this day in the Qur'an when he says addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when your Lord took out of the offspring from the loins of the children of Adam and made them bear witness about themselves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them Am I not your Lord? I lest to be Rabbikum And how did mankind respond to that? How did creation respond to that? Indeed, we bear witness to you, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say that on the day of resurrection we will, so, on the day, so you cannot say on the day of re resurrection that we were not aware of this, of this covenant. So as believers, we have on a weekly basis, on the day of Friday, this constant renewal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the day of Arafah and on the day of Eid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us with more and more opportunities to renew that contract with Him, that divine contract with Him. And so when we talk about the day of Arafah, reflecting on yesterday's event, what is Arafah and what makes Arafah so special? Some of the scholars actually say that this covenant took place at Arafah or on the day of Arafah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salatu wasalam 
before admitting him into paradise, he created his children, not in the forms that we are in right now, but rather our souls, or even in the forms of the specks or atoms. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took that covenant with us. And what was our response to that when Allah cried out, Am I not your Lord? It was bala. It wasn't even yes. It was bala, verily, indeed. It was intuitive. As if our souls were just predisposed to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that very first moment of creation. And so again, throughout our existence here in this world, we are constantly reminded to renew that covenant with Him because that is a covenant that we took upon ourselves on that very first day, in that very first moment. And so, we did not only testify to that covenant, but we also agreed to uphold that covenant. And so we have to ask ourselves, how are we upholding this covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it once a year? Is it once a month? Is it once a week? And what are we doing to uphold that covenant? Are we one actively exemplifying the guidance that has been bestowed upon us? Are we exemplifying the way of our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the guidance and the example that he brought forth to us? How are we trying to uphold our commitment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And so one of the examples that we see is the example of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, the father of all prophets. And in fact, our messenger, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam, in the Quran is told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to look back at the example of Ibrahim. So Allah addresses the Prophet when he says, ثُمَّ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ أَنِتَّبِعْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفَةَ وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ then we, we reveal to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, follow the creed of Ibrahim, follow the path of Ibrahim, follow the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, a man who had pure faith and who was not an idolater. He did not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we can see that there is a common theme or issue here between the Prophet's life and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, We'll expand on this in the second khutbah, but both of them, if you look at the situation in Mecca during the prophetic period, and we look at what Ibrahim was dealing with, with his own family, with his own people, and with his own father, it was the idea that the asnam were prevalent, that people were not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, but rather they were taking stones and other means to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Essentially associating partners with him. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfiru Allah alayhi wa lakum wa astaghfiru wa innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala Qala Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala fi kitabihi al-aziz Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala ala sayyidina Muhammad كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. and so we see that when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is told to look at the example of Ibrahim عليه الصلاة والسلام, we must reflect on the attributes that Allah سبحانه وتعالى characterizes Ibrahim عليه الصلاة والسلام with in the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Ibrahim kana umma. Verily indeed, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was a nation. He was a civilization within himself. And the scholars say several things about this. They say that one, he was a nation. Why? Because he perfected all attributes of praiseworthy. And so 
One of the Arab poets says, "Laysa ala Allahi bi mustankilin an yajma alalim alam fi wahidin." It is not objectionable for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to bring the universe into one. And so Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was that universe. He exemplified order, discipline. He had tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He inculcated attributes that were praiseworthy attributes. Another thing that the scholars mention in this regard is that he was one believer in a society that was prevalent with kufr or disbelief. So he was the only believer in his society. And so, when we reflect upon this, often times, be it in our professional settings, be it at school, we find ourselves being that one Muslim, or two Muslims, or three Muslims. And even as Muslims living in the state, in the states we are a minority. And so, disbelief is surrounded. We are constantly ingrained, ingrained with ideas that are antithetical to our own belief system. And so this was Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. But despite that, despite being him, that one individual who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that gained him closeness to the one. That gained him closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he didn't allow his predicament, the people who were around him, to influence that belief. And so he was mustaqim. Right? He was upright. The third thing that they say about him being a nation is that he was a leader of guidance. Right? And in Arabic, an ummah can mean مُعَلِّمُنْ nas al khair An individual who is teaching people all good. So he is also attributed as being someone who is followed, an imam. The second attribute that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam with is he says, qanitan lillah. He was obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was one who stood up for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded, commanded him to do. And we see this on their day of Eid that he went out and he broke all of the, he smashed all of the idols with an axe and he left an axe hanging on the biggest idol so that they can all reflect and see that even the greatest idol from the idols that they were worshipping could not stop this act of Ibrahim So essentially, this rock was useless. What was the result of this? They asked, who did, who did this? Who did this to our idols? قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا فَتَنْ يَذْكُرُهُمْ يُقَالُوا لَهُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ is they said that we heard about a young man, Ibrahim, and you know they they, uh, they 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 didn't accuse him of doing it, but he did it. He did it. And so, as a result of that, the townspeople collected a fire, and it was such a great fire that people couldn't even get close to it. So they had to catapult Ibrahim والسلام, into this fire. Now as Ibrahim والسلام, is being thrown into this fire, mid-air perhaps, what is he saying? He's saying what the Hujaj were repeating these past few days. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك So even in that moment, he wasn't complaining. He was not thinking about his state, but rather he was showing a state of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he knew that what was happening to him was only getting him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he wasn't looking at the material. He wasn't concerned about what he was going to be thrown into at the moment, but rather what the outcome of that tribulation would be. And so he was looking up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the result, when he's in the fire, Kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Be peaceful and gentle to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And in that moment, what does Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam do? He's standing in prayer. 
He's again thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we do when we're fired with the Islamophobes? When we're fired by individuals who disagree with us? What does our state look like then? What is our response and who are we returning to? These are questions that we need to ask ourselves on a daily level. And this is why it becomes important for us to look at the examples of these people, such as Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, to turn back to them for inspiration and try to exemplify them. And in conclusion, there's other attributes that were given to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, but on this note, of just being appreciative of the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the blessing of believing in Him it's one that we cannot even fathom but we are thankful for and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve because there's a lot of people out there who are trying to take that away from you and I on the day of Arafah during the Prophet wasalam's final sermon there is one verse that's revealed اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيْتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامِ مَدِينَ That on this day, I have perfected your religion. I have completed my blessing upon you. And I am pleased as Islam, the religion of Islam, as my religion, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion. This was revealed on the very same mount, uh, mountain that we took that original covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on. And so, interestingly enough, some of the scholars actually say that this verse was revealed on, this is Ibn Abbas Allah's opinion, on the day of the Eid, when it occurred on Friday. And so this verse is even applicable to us today or yesterday. But we have to really think about the, this blessing. We really have to not only then think about it, but try to embody it. And once we embody it, that's when our state of consciousness will be a state in which we are constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The form, the prayer, everything that we do towards worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will become more and more meaningful. And that is how firmness is created. It's created through consistency. And that consistency will hopefully gain us a greater consciousness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can realize the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed us with so that we can continue to testify and then be examples for each other and that is upholding the covenant to not only keep it to ourselves but then through our character, through our action through our state of being others will recognize us without having for us to even state that we're Muslim publicly people will look at us and say, this person is a Muslim. I know this person. I can respect this person because I know what they stand for. So with that, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us upright. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to renew that covenant throughout our lives. That, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates that state of consciousness within us so that we are not waving by the individuals who are trying to take our religion away from us. They are trying to attack our ideals. They are trying to, that are trying to attack our values. And that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He make us all individuals who are Khalilullah. That we become friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we become people who are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our actions and through our state of being. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab al-nab. يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على طاعتك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على محبتك يا الله we ask you for firmness in our religion يا الله we ask you for your love يا الله we ask that you assist those who are going through difficulties be they in our household be they in our personal lives be they in our communities be there around the world. Ya Allah, there's a lot of people who are suffering on this day. Ya Allah, please bring joy to them. Allow us to be conscious of some of the suffering that they are feeling so that we can be sympathetic to them and that we can give to them. Ya Allah, make us people of service. Ya Allah, make us people of service to you and to your creation. And with that, uh, I wish you all an Eid Mubarak. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.